Yn lle gynta, rhai fi ymddiherio am ddim ymythu darlethion Cymraeg oherwydd oes dim digon o geirfa geni yn yr iaith yn ef. Ond, wel, tro nesa dwi'n addo tri o i dysgu Cymraeg. Dyna, dyna. Diolch. Dyna ffwrdd i fi cael gwahoddiad arall. I'm, I'm turning into English now, and uh, the first thing, the second thing I want to make public is my uh, thankfulness to Win and to uh, um, Bill and to Walter. There's no Bill here. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, of, because of the invitation, and uh, we are very, we feel very honored, and uh, well, in, in name of the Welsh Association of Toledo. I will say once again thank you. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so um, this su this uh, subject, this uh, part of a study I made <coughs> into the newcomers between 1865 and 1864, and uh, you will see in when I, while I give the lecture why I chose those nine years instead of a whole period of ten years. So. <coughs> The first settler in Chubut will define, will try to define by several authors, and I will not quote them. You can read them here. They include myself, the last one, because it's the last document I've read about the subject. And uh, the definition of first settler, I must say that uh, maybe it is not important, but uh, for many people, including me, when I studied the subject, it was important because of the mythic aspect of the newcomers, the first coming uh, in the sense of uh, creators of a new thing, isn't it? And the uh, definition of first settlers is uh, tacit and varying from one author to another. So I try to make an explicit uh, uh, definition in uh, 2006. You will find it in the bio biography. Uh, my definition goes like this. All those persons aboard Mimosa with a final destination to Patagonia, or babies born during the trip, or people coming in the advanced party, and it includes those people coming between uh, May the 25th, the, the, the date of the, not of the, the, the real departure of the Mimosa, but the date uh, in which all people was already aboard. So it includes the baby who died in those three days the Mosa took to really le leave the, the, the River Severn. And uh, until September the 12th, 1865, because it was the date of the arrival of the, West, of the last person considered to be a first settler, who is Eleanor uh, Griffith, the wife of Louis Jones, who as somebody told yesterday, uh, had uh, stay, stayed in Patagonia because of an uh, accident in her back. Non-Welsh first settlers for me are all persons fitting the definition of first settler in Chubut who were not born in Wales nor were immersed in Welsh culture before coming. That includes Frank Ames or Jerry Moore for me, which was uh, born between 1829 and died in the colony in 1967 and Dr. Thomas William Nassau Green, who everybody considers a first settler, notwithstanding not him having stayed for only three months. Frank Ames, or Jerry Moore, was the son, of, the son of an Irish man and a woman from India, one of the workers hired by Lewis Jones in Carmen de Patagones, arrived to the colony in June 1865, uh, more than one month before the Mimosa, saved Edwin Roberts' life, planted the first trees, uh, popular trees in the Valley of Chubut, stayed in the colony working as a sailor in the ship Denby, was planning to begin looking for gold in the Valdez Peninsula, and was drawn in River Chubut on January the 1st, 1867. And Dr. Thomas William Nassau Green was born on January the 8th in 1884 in a farm in the county of Kildare near Dublin, Ireland. Studied in the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, qualifying as a surgeon in 1862. 
was uh, working in a dispensary practice from 1862 to 1864. In 1864, moved to Edinburgh, studying in the Royal College of Medicine. He was very young, as you can see. Qualified MD in April 1865, being 21 years old, and moved to Liverpool with the idea of becoming a ship's doctor, like his brother John was already. <coughs> He was hired by Michael D. Jones as the college doctor for one year. Arrived in Mimosa, is included in all the lists of, uh, as a first settler in Chubut. Undoubtedly, he was uh, of invaluable um, help while he was with the settlers. He stayed in the colony until November the 10th, 1865, a little more than three months. After a while in Buenos Aires, moved to the Tuyu area in the south, being of big help during the, the cholera epidemics of 1866. He, he, they say that he himself was burying the dead because nobody wanted to touch them. In 1869, moved to San Jose, Uruguay, and ultimately worked in the British hospital in Montevideo. Married to an English woman in Ireland during a holiday in Ireland, not living there. They both returned to Montevideo, and at the end of his career, he went back to Ireland, died in 1922. Those two are, are the, the two first settlers for me, in my definition, that were not Welsh in origin. This, well, sorry, this is, I don't know how to go back from here. Anyway, that was the, the, the documents uh, were mainly, t the, the information was mainly t took from um, Mimosa, the, the book about the Mimosa by Susan Wilkinson. And uh, so that's the definition. Once again, my definition. Jerry stayed from what, for some time before the arrival of the Mimosa until his own death. But he was hired as a worker. But Dr. Green was also under contract. So <coughs> we take off those two parts of the definition, he's one of those coming in the last party. And he came in the dates. So I wonder why should he not be a first settler? That is a part of my work in 200, 2006. Now, to our subject, non welsh immigrants between September 1865 and September 1864. <clears throat> That is a work I presented last year in the 7th International Forum of the Welsh in Patagonia, and uh, I tried to find second settlers. Uh, it's a non-official definition, that uh, definition, because uh, it means people coming as settlers to Patagonia during the arrival of the last person considered to be a first settler and uh, the arrival of the <coughs> large group groups of immigrants, immigrants, from, uh, beginning from 1864. Every person arrived to the colony as a settler or as a visitor, but staying to live in the settlement, arrived between September 1865 and September 1864. Uh, that uh, includes uh, the, the time between the arrival of the last person considered to be a first settler as I said, September the 12th, 1865, which was Ellen Griffith, and the arrival of the first group among the large group uh, of 1864-1875, sorry, 1874-1875, which was on October the 1st, 1874. Occasional visitors are discarded, so are surveyors, deserters from ships, fugitives from justice, Sailors of ships not belonging to the colony, survivors from shipwrecks, workers, etc., as long as they don't, did not stay as settlers. So that's the, the, the sorry, the, the document. It's not published yet. It will be published next year, I hope. And uh, the precedents are uh, of those, the, the, I want to. Uh, to Kefernogi to give a support to my definition. And uh, I can say that during the Estebo of uh, Ulava in 1888, Richard Jones won a prize. And he defined that period. 
he told us that during the six, next seven years, uh, between eight, uh, sorry, 1867 uh, and 1874, five families arrived besides some single men. Those are the families. They are not uh, of interest for us, except uh, John Haycock and Ellis Jones, because all the others were, were Welsh or American Welsh. And we can see here um, an article about John Griffith Henry, who once, which once again, in which once again you can see that date between the disembarkment of in 1865 until the disembarkment in 1874, four families and two singles joined the colony, and they are the names uh, uh, below. They are uh, once again only uh, John Haycock and John Ellis are of interest for us. <clears throat> Matthew Henry Jones, a modern author, calculated the numbers of uh, newcomers between the, uh, in, in the same period, uh, 1865 and 1874. And I will just uh, make you uh, note that uh, that's the period he has taken. He does not define the, day, the exact dates as I did, but anyway, he's a president. Sorry, and uh, that does not matter it was for the other uh, lecture. Means of arrival of the, of the settlers, I will let you read them, not speaking about them, because not all of them were uh, 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 fit the definition uh, of uh, uh, non watch people. So uh, the of interest for us is the one who arrived by land in 1866. One person, he was a Frenchman. Uh, some of them coming in the Denby, uh, and those arrived in, in Mevanui, and those who were, were ex-sailors. Settlers arrived by land, one person. He was a Frenchman anonymous Frenchman, because uh, it was not easy for me to make the difference because, uh, between him and another Frenchman who also accomplishes, uh, who also fits the definition uh, or the subject of this lecture. It, this French, Frenchman arrived by land to Tarauson on Sept uh, December the 9th, 1866. That is taken from the diary of Ellis, Richard Ellis. He saved the colony in the mid-1867 by warning the settlers about an oncoming attack by the Northern Tewelche, the Trap of Chiquichano. This is a very, uh, um, it, it's a matter of discussion, but uh, it is uh, documented by two of the first settlers. So I, I think it, it was true, but uh, uh, because the, the, the tribe was very angry uh, because they wanted to leave the colony. And uh, uh, one of the persons uh, telling us uh, uh, about it is Richard Jones Glinty, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Richard Jones uh, Glinty. And uh, the other one is Thomas Jenkins, but uh, through a uh, non direct document published in uh, a drawout. I don't remember the date exactly, but uh, you can see in it in some of my works. He was the builder of a cave in Cape Pont, ornamented with Doric columns three by three yards, which was place of the agreement, the so-called agreement of Puerto Marin, in which the, the directors of the movement agreed to stay he finally agreed finally to stay in the in the colony, and uh, Eli has a work about that place, which I read with delight. He was a farmer. He cultivated wheat, and he could have been the Frenchman going back to Patagones in the early 70s after selling his wheat and the horse to John Molly Roberts. That is what he says in a letter, published in the deed uh, in the date you can see there. So uh, next is settlers arrived in the Denby in, the, in those two years, 1866 and 1874 persons. Three were Welsh, they are no 
matter of um, they're not matter in this uh, the subject of this lecture and Bartol Vashen Vacher who arrived in mid July 1867 again he was a Frenchman he was possibly the French cook arrived in the Denby he was a brick maker initially as the brute says and uh, Later, he was especially a carpenter. He's uh, depicted in a brute as having seen a, a boat approaching to the, to the colony, creating uh, emotion and uh, people going to the mouth of the river, but the, the ship was not there. They say that he was a carpenter, and the second national census in 1895, he was, staying, he was uh, still in the colony, says the same. So uh, he lived in Trerauson, and uh, in the year 1893, from January the 26th on, a certain Louis de Bat announced that his tools are for sale. We don't know whether he was retired or ill, but he was still in the colony in 1895 during the census. And we also have a map of the place where he lived. That is the very well-known map of Richard Jones Bevin which I date uh, not 1865, as it says there, but uh, uh, more circa 1868, because of the names of the people who were there, who arrived later. And there's the same map and the same house as depicted by a redrawing of the map made by Tega Roberts, which is available in uh, the Regional Museum in Gaiman. He was living a bit far from the others. And uh, you can see also of interest the big, the big uh, square is the location of Tarantir, Erhem and the Thinva. Then come the settlers arrived in the ocean. First half of November 1867, there were three persons of interest for us is the wife, the, the mother, which was Charlotte Green, who was American and uh, she was not of Welsh ancestry. She was uh, a very well known, she belonged to a very well known family in USA, as we will see. But the wife of a very important uh, settler, David Williams Oneida, and uh, well, as you can see, their daughter, Gwendolyn Williams, born, was born in Buenos Aires on the way to Patagonia. Well, how do I go back? Uh, I will not read all of this. But uh, we can say that he was uh, 23 years, almost 23 years old when she came to Patagonia. They say that she didn't want to leave the ship when she saw how desertic the, the place was. And uh, she undergone a trick. She was, uh, the, her baby, uh, Gwendolyn, was taken from her by uh, <laughs> a game changer. Uh, uh, Abraham Matthews' wife's wife, she took the baby from her and uh, took the baby to land, she, so she had no more uh, option than to go <laughs> or, or song. Uh, she was, as I told you, uh, very belonged to a very old family, and uh, for example, she was related to General Nathaniel Green, one of the heroes of the revolution against the English in American Revolution, isn't it? Uh, well, they lived in a place called, of course, Castel Oneida, the place where they lived in, uh, in America. And uh, another, they had another one of the name, name Everock Neweed, New York, because they were coming from New York. Uh, she was married to a very uh, important man in the colony. She was a, a game changer, of course. I will not tell another thing. And uh, she was um, a very early widower. Uh, so in 1886, he, his wife, his, sorry, his husband died. So she, she married again, Edward Lloyd, and gave birth to another uh, two babies. And. Uh, during the second uh, birth, she died. Those are letters. Uh, I, was, I began to search about this subject when I was very, very young, as you can see for the date. Uh, 
That's, that is a letter uh, of um, certain David Lloyd Williams from Costa Mesa, California, related to that family. And uh, that's, that is a letter to his nephew, Ricardo Calmater, which is in my archive, telling the whole story of the Greens and the Williams Oneida in uh, America. There's another one here that was sent to me by David Lloyd Williams himself because I wanted to know whether we were related or not. We are not, but anyway, I didn't know. And he was very clear. He gave me all the, the genealogical tree in his letter. letter. Settlers arrived aboard Mevanui. There were 11 persons there. So says Captain Dennis Stone in his uh, um, uh, in, uh, report uh, of the HMS Cracker in 1871 and William L. Hughes in his book. Edith says that there were only 10 passengers on board, including a blacksmith, a shoemaker, and a motorman. And Edravot, in 1913, says that the, those uh, 11 persons were the families of Lewis Jones, four persons, John Haycock, blacksmith, three, and Ellie Jones, shoemaker, three. Why does the deed says 10 persons? Because, uh, uh, as everybody knows, Elena Morgan was born abroad, uh, uh, on board. But there, Nadine and uh, Wynne have spoken about the subject. So uh, I will not read all of this, but uh, I want, why, why were there between that, sorry, between that little amount of people, a blacksmith and a shoemaker? And uh, then you will get to know that uh, David Williams, the, 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 the settler that lost his life trying to cross from New Bay to the valley, was a shoemaker, the only one aboard the Mimosa. So they lost the only shoemaker. And uh, William Hughes, the quarryman, took his job. And he was earning lots of money. And uh, he was not given anything mm, uh, than his work. And uh, they, that is um, a letter from H.H. H. Calvin complaining of the prices he wanted for repairing or making new shoes. And uh, uh, notwithstanding that, they had to give him the leather and the nails and everything. So uh, they were happy, uh, I think. Uh, anyway, this quarryman, William Hughes, left in mid-1867. And so did Edward Parry, senior, the only blacksmith in the colony. So that's importance. They had no uh, shoemaker, uh, not, uh, not um, blacksmith, not blacksmith in, in the colony. This is the family of Leo Jones. I will not speak about them because they were uh, not, they were Welsh, but uh, uh, well, they, 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 they were in the, in the Mevanui and uh, she was coming back. Louis Jones and, and uh, Ellen Griffith were coming back. That's why they, they are first settlers of Chubut. The important, one of the important families is the family of John Haycock. We know that there were three, three, but we don't know who were them besides himself. So uh, John Haycock was an Englishman from Amwithic or Shrewsbury, and all uh, according to Berwin, a blacksmith. He brought some machines. He lived in two farms, uh, which you can see the numbers there, in, in the colony. And he was murdered towards the end of 1870 and the beginnings in 1880. His body was found in the river with a wound in the head. And a certain child, Childs, was accused and found guilty. Uh, the family was then John Heck of himself. He arrived with two relatives. Who are them? Sorry, I'm, I have the mistake in the, the word relatives. His wife and son and the daughter? We don't know. But uh, in the census of Ellis Jones, the other, the, the shoemaker, we, he, came back to, he came back to Wales in, towards the end of 1872, and uh, he got a census with him. Not very detailed, but uh, not telling the names of the people, but the composition of it. And uh, he said the family was still composed of three persons. 
And uh, the census in the report of HMS Fairfax 1876 says that he had he was a head of a family of seven persons, six able-bodied men and a woman. <laughs> How could it be? The reason was that uh, between 1874 and 1875, there was a lot of people coming, and uh, the place was not prepared. So many people was living, hiring rooms in uh, uh, the first settlers' houses. Family of John Haycock again, no proofs of any Mrs. John Haycock in the colony, but there's a proof. Uh, very many, very documents speak of a certain Frances Haycock, born circa 1855. She was an English woman, as uh, the National Census tells us. He married Nicholas Whitty in January 1873 in the colony. He's another non Welsh uh, settler. And uh, on October the 17th, 1881, she signs under the name of Francis Whitty the receipt of a title of the farms belonging to her father, to his deceased father, John Heco. You must remember that he was murdered by Charles Childs. In conclusion, Francis was the second member of the Haycock family aboard the Mevanui. This is a national census, and there is the name of uh, Francis Whitty, another game changer. Family of John Haycock. Francis Haycock married Nicholas Whitty in, eight, as I told, in 1873, but there's still a woman in the family in the census of 1873. 76, who was she? If she was married to Nicholas Whitty, she could not be living with John Haycock because Nicholas Whitty is with the family of the census. So the answer is in the family of Ellis Jones, the Shoemaker. Ellis Jones. He was Shoemaker, arrived in the Mimbani with two relatives. His family is not in the census of other Jones, 1872, but he is head of family of five in the report of 18. 76. Two able bodied men, a not able bodied ma male, could be a child or an ill or, or old man, and two women. In 1881, he replaced John Walker in signing the reception of the title of farm number 148. But John Walker was had signed in the place of Ellie Jones on December the 31, the 31st, 1818, the receipt of the titles of farms belonging to uh, Ellis Jones. So it indicates a very close relationship, I think. Ellis Jones was buried in Rawson on May the 17th, 1889, nine, aged 52. Who were his two relatives about the Minvanui? Hardy Haycock. She was the daughter of, uh, is, uh, we find he, her in many documents in the colony. She was the daughter of John and Rebecca Haycock. She was born circa 1839. We conclude that she was the daughter of our blacksmith and sister to Francis Haycock. She was married to a Mr. Jones, probably the shoemaker Alice Jones. After becoming a widower, she got married again to John M. Jones. <coughs> and. Uh, so it says the census of 1895. As you can see, she was a bit older than him. But it's a detail only. And uh, we find another person, John Samuel Walker, born between 1855 and uh, 1854. He was one of few persons arrived to, to you during the first five years of the colony and not, uh, after uh, Matthew Henry Jones. He was the son of John Walker and Harry the Haycock, uh, probably a stepson of John Haycock, married to his widower, widowed mother, Harriet. We conclude that John Walker was, the, sorry for the mistakes, the third relative arriving with Ellis Jones. So there were Ellis Jones, his wife, Harriet Haycock, and his stepson, John Samuel Walker. And uh, another proof is that two of the children of John Samuel Walker bore the names Harry Walker and Ellis Jones Walker, the names of his parents. John Samuel Walker was probably a motorman traveling in Mevanui, meant for the machines brought by, by his grandfather, John Haycock. I 
uh, is my question, because he was only 15 years old. But in that time, young children were working from very, very, when they were children. In the colony, he married Anne Williams, one of her daughters. The daughters was named, as I said, her Harriet, and one of the sons was named Ellis Jones Walker. He died before 1910, and that's all I know about, about him. Going back to John's fam John Haycott's family, there is still a woman in the family in the census of 1876. Who was she? The answer is in the family of Felix Jones, as Jamaica has told. So John Haycock, now we know that the name of John Haycock's wife. She was Rebecca, mother of Harriet, wife of Ellie Jones, but we don't find her name in the documents. Was John Haycock a widower? Who was then his third relative aboard Mevanui? In the report of 1876, there was a woman in the family of John Haycock living with six men. She could have been Mary Haycock, a single woman deceased in Chubut, aged 51, in 1886. And taking account of his age and surname, we could conclude that she had, could have been a sister of John Haycock. So my reconstruction of the extended family of John Haycock goes like this. John Haycock himself, Rebecca stayed in, she died in, in Wales, and she arrived with uh, his sister, Mary Haycock, his um, daughter, Francis Haycock, and uh, his extended family, Harry Haycock, her, his daughter, with his second half husband, Ellie Jones, and her uh, son, John Samuel Walker. There's a, my theoretical reconstruction of the list of the passengers aboard the, the Mevanui. So, uh, sorry. And uh, uh, we already spoke of all of them. Ex-sailors, and I'm almost finished, were John Doyle, who, who was an Irish sailor, sailor from Dublin. He came about 1870, uh, between 1870 and 1872. Ultimately, he was coming from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. He married uh, Margaret Evans in 1873. She was, Margaret Evans was the babysitter in the Mevanui, the uh, family Lewis Jones. The ceremony was presided by the Reverend White H. Sterling, Anglican Bishop of the Falkland Islands, in his only visit to the colony. They had six children, and he left to Montevideo in the middle 80s and came back as a practical investor in 1886, but he did not land, and she was already married for the, uh, as, as a widower. And uh, the other one was Nicholas Whitty, sailor from New Zealand, came in the same period, ultimately coming from Liverpool, married Francis Haycock, the one we were speaking about, the girl coming in, the, in Mevanui, in 1873. He was a member of an enterprise hunting sea wolves with, with John Doyle himself. And uh, he was drowned in a shipwreck before December, uh, before December the, th the 31st, 1880. So this is a list of non-Welsh immigrants into the Welsh colony in Chubut. And I would add a quotation mark in Ellis Jones because of his name and because uh, the, the, the county of uh, Shropshire is a very Welsh English county. 13 non Welsh immigrants out of 29 second settlers. And that's the school in where we try to teach Welsh. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.